we go. There's no title bigger than this. It is great to be back. Welcome to the Worlds. Wow. Just superb. Grit and determination. Does her. Gets it done. What darting entertainment this is. Brilliant, brilliant finishing. And he saves his skin. Pummeling the trebles again. Oh, he's in again. There it is. Nathan Aspel's fired up. Composure and skill. Oh, magnificent from Van Gerwen. He's up there to prove a point. And this time, Peter gets it right. It's all right on the night at the Alexandra Palace. Hello and welcome to On The Wire from the World Championship. Christmas is approaching, it's the final day of action before the Christmas break and he's on the way, you know. Can you hear him? He's on the way for Christmas. He's gonna break into your house in the middle of the night with a sack full of goodies. It's Chris Murphy! Merry Christmas to you. Thanks, Dad. Merry Christmas. There we go. Lovely. Uh, right, well, let's talk about yesterday because we had a double session of action and all sorts of things going on. Former winners being knocked out. Uh, but we started with Brendan Dolan. Apparently it's Brendan Dolan, mm -hmm. but he was thrown at twice the speed of Brendan Dolan. So I don't know who that is. And it was good for a bit and then rubbish for a bit. Yeah, a Christmas shirt as well from Brendan Dolan, which left a lot to be desired. But Joe Cullen, very, very impressive for once at Alexandra Palace and yep. seeing off Wayne Jones. Don't know who that is either because Joe Cullen doesn't do that at Ali Pali, but a strange day yesterday. Uh, what we did see was Simon Whitlock. Now, we've seen plenty of this Simon Whitlock this year. He looks absolutely fantastic despite the shot of the tournament from Labanowskis to stay in in that fourth set. Yeah, 1 6 4 from Labanowskis to stay in it with Whitlock waiting on double 18, but then replied with a 10 darter and reeled off three straight legs to win. Very, very impressive. So, so impressive, but not as impressive as this man, Danny Baggish, just a day after finding out that his elder brother had suffered a serious stroke. He was in ICU, still is, I think, at the moment. He goes on stage and he does that. He beats Adrian Lewis. Now, I know Adrian missed a boatload of doubles and it wasn't very impressive, but for me, I think that's probably the most impressive display from anybody in the tournament, given the context. From yeah, to, to deal with everything that was going on and put in a performance like that against a man who still holds weight in professional darts, Adrian Lewis looks like a shadow of his former self but a massive massive moment for Danny Bagg a huge win for him and, and can only give him maximum credit for doing that in the circumstances yeah the first 170 checkout so that afternoon session saw the 164 from Darius Labanowskis and the 170 uh, and, and Baggish that was the start of a little fight back in that deciding set and look at that emotion emotion what a man thoroughly nice man as well and some dart player um, that's all one former winner go let's have a look at the evening session because we're about to see another one go mm. but it all started with Danny Knopper who I'll be honest was rubbish he was he is so lucky to get through against the South African qualifier Cameron isn't he yeah next basically. next fair enough fair, it doesn't deserve any more than that uh, for Danny Knopper who has been excellent in the PDC circuit for a good couple of years at least to be honest uh, so Cameron Carolison going out but Devin Peterson well he went through but I mean, the number of doubles missed in this game are not even close, were they? I mean, Steve Lennon's missed nearly 40. Was Devon wasn't far behind. 72 missed darts Ooh. at double between the pair of them. Um, and Devon Peterson was looking to be amused, but Lennon could have won the first couple of sets, missed darts at double, in set deciders in both of them. It could have been a very different story for Devon, but he said he's going to learn from it, and he does a lot of learning, and he'll be back after Christmas. He does. He's very, very positive. But this, Rob Cross had led all the way through this game and the pressure on Dirk van Dijvenbode to hit a 12 darter to win the match with Cross on double six. He didn't give him a match dart. That's one of the most impressive moments in this tournament from anybody, isn't it? Best match of the tournament so far for my money. Better than uh, Matt Campbell, Scott Wade. I think so, yeah, I enjoyed it more. Given the, the, the names that were playing, of course, Rob Cross, former world champion. Uh, Dirk van Dijvenbode in that last leg, seven treble 19s, absolutely sublime stuff. And I've not really been sold on him so far, but I'm starting to be convinced? converted. Yeah, well, well, we'll talk about that in a moment, because Dimitri Vandenberg, I'm pretty sure everybody's getting convinced by him. World match play champion, but he keeps on getting up on big stages and keeps on piling in devastating displays. Mm. I mean, what he's done to Paul Lim there, I mean, it shouldn't be allowed. Everybody loves Paul Lim, and quite frankly, it was brutal. Yeah, well, Vandenberg, the second highest average of the tournament so far, behind Michael Van Gerwen. Paul Lim, by the way, with the best checkout percentage that we are going to see at this tournament. Two out of two Not on bad. the doubles for Not Lim. Bad. But yeah, Vandenberg, he had a record average at the Grand Slam and he won the match play, so we know that he's very, very capable of doing it on the big stage with or without a crowd and he could be one to watch after Christmas. OK, so you say you're not convinced, you mm. haven't been sold by Dirk Van Dijvenberg, despite runs of the Pro Tour, 
Euro Tour semi-final, Grand Prix final. But that was the moment, you think. That that game against Rob Cross, where you were convinced that we have a, a real proper top player yeah, on Yeah, for me, there's this narrative, and whether it's, rel- whether it's true or not really, um, of players doing well this year might be a bit of an outlier. Um, because of the different circumstances that are going on. He was playing well before, though, well, wasn't he? was he? in Barnsley and Wigan and the like. And, and on Belgium some... on the Euro Tour, semi-final okay, well, there. Yes, OK, well, I seem to be on trial here, but I've had the jury <laughs> out on Dirk van Dijvenboerde, and to be honest, he's, he's pushed me in the direction that actually he could go on and be one of the top players in this sport. The way that he held it together in that match... Um, I think definitely he could go on at least to the quarterfinals in this tournament, which was his ambition before he got here. Absolutely. Well, quarterfinals in three of the last four TV events, as if he is one of the top performers in the world right now. Chris he is Murphy. now, yes. Yeah. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Now. Right. Let's have a look what we've got coming up uh, tonight because this looks really, really good to me. Keegan Brown, Dave Chisnell. Now, the head to head record Keegan Brown beat Chizzy last time out. Mm. The previous 12 times. He lost, and there were some losses. There was the, a quarter final at the Grand Slam back when Keegan first broke through. Two meetings at the World Match Play. Do you think that the number eight seed gets it done? He's been a bit up and down this year. Yeah, it's all about which Dave Chisnell turns up. I think Keegan Brown. Um, we sort of know what to expect from him based on that first round performance, which was pretty good. Uh, the scoreline a bit flattering against Ryan mm-hmm. Meikle, I would say. Uh, but he's certainly capable of giving Dave Chisnell a game. If they both turn up, it will be an Ali Pali classic. But I just think Chisholm has the edge. I don't know. I've, I've just got this fear. It seems like a game that, that Keegan might just pull out the bag, and I'm not really mm. sure what Chizzy turns up, as you say. Uh, Nick Kenny made very hard work of things in his first round game. He did manage to get the win. Won loads more legs, but only got through in a deciding set. Jermaine Watamina, now, ridiculously, at the start of this tournament, I picked out Jermaine to reach the semi finals. Uh, mm. I doubt you're going to agree with me on that prediction are you? I don't agree but I do think he'll take a step towards it before mm-hmm. falling at maybe the next hurdle or the one after we, that. We'll always <laughs> agree to a point before <laughs> yes, we eventually yeah. disagree and yeah. fall out. I don't think it would be a, a an outlandish call to say that Jermaine will beat Nick Kenny. Mm. Um, I think Nick has he got in through the qualifier um, yeah, as you said, a strange performance in his first match. A strange player to watch, really, when I've seen him on the tour this mm. year. Um, I've seen him a few times on the stream, and he's not been fantastic. But then in other matches, he's hit a nine dart, had high averages. So if he turns up, it could be a game. But I actually think Watermana blows him away. Well, the recent Winter Series, Jermaine Watermana played some of the best darts we've ever seen mm. from him. He, I, I think he's, he's very, very well set for a good run at this year's Willow Mill World Championship. Nathan Aspinall always has a good run at the World Championship. He's been here twice. He's reached the semi-finals twice. But Scott Waits is just one of those players, one game per day tournament, mm. he knows how to get it done. The game against Matt Campbell was the best game of the tournament until Murph rudely took the title off it and bestowed it upon the Dirk Van Dijven and Rob Cross game. Uh, but do you think that the Asp can hold off the two-time Lakeside winner? I think we're in for a good game, actually. Mm. Wentz, as you said, big stage player, it seems. Um, and, you know, two Lakeside titles, uh, Grand Slam champion, of course, in the past. And Nathan Asper, I'm not quite sure. I think it, it might have tailed off a little bit towards the back end of this year. So when you put all that into the mix import, I think that we could end up with a very, very close game. Well, it was only it's less than three weeks, well, about three weeks ago, that those two met in the first round of the Players' Championship Finals and Nathan won it, but he won it 6-5 mm. and survived match darts. The final game of the night, the builder from the West Midlands, Jason Lowe, on his debut, even admitted in his interview, he won his opening game against the brilliant Russian, Dmitry Gorbanov, who I want to see loads more of, but even admitted, to be honest, since lockdown, I've not been anywhere near the standard that I have produced when I've played PDC darts, not just when I got my tour card at the start of the year, but when I played like UK Open qualifiers and turned up for stuff. He'd been really, really good. We've not seen that from him. If he doesn't recapture it now, mm-hmm. Michael Smith smashes him out of this tournament, doesn't he? Probably. I think there is pressure on Michael Smith. I think he's the type of guy to, to maybe have that nagging seed of doubt going in his head. The last man to play before Christmas. Please don't lose. I've got to stay in this tournament mm. after Christmas. And Jason Lowe can be a tricky customer, but as you said, because of the fact that he perhaps hasn't been dedicating his stuff and working as hard um, as he was 12 months ago, um, or even 
back at, at the UK Open at yep. the start of this year when he pushed Michael Van Gerwen all the way, um, I do think that it should be a comfortable win for the Bully Boy. Well, look, there you go. That's your menu for the final session of action before the Christmas break. We've got Dave Chisnell, a multiple major finalist and a world youth champion in Keegan Brown. Nick Kenny making his debut against the machine gun Jermaine Watamina, who an idiot like me is predicted to go far in this tournament. Uh, Nathan Aspinall, two-time semi-finalist against Scott Waits, a two-time world title winner in the BDO. And then Michael Smith, a former finalist here, a man still looking for that real breakthrough, that first major title. He's taking on Jason Lowe. That'll bring us up to the Christmas break and we'll be back on the 27th for the resumption of the William O World Championship. Enjoy Christmas, stay safe. And stay at ho, ho home. Oh. Spoiled it, haven't I? No. Yes, yes you have. Merry Christmas, Christmas is cancelled, but that's his fault.